Welcome back to Memories with Near Automata. And in this part, after we make this clown zombie robot self-destruct, we are going to enter the third and final resource recovery unit. Like the medallions in Ocarina of Time. Ex well, the, the pendants, I should say. Like the pendants in Ocarina of Time. We must collect all three of them before we can access the door of time. Mm, now, is that actually still true thanks to ISG? Over. ISG? Over. Infinite sword glitch. I never did the infinite sword glitch, but... While we're on the subject, what, what is the infinite sword glitch? <laughs> For Ocarina of Time, the infinite sword glitch is the ability to save, uh, to save state, uh, permanent damage state on, onto either your sword or your main hand weapon. And, uh, it fucks, and it fucks with a lot of, uh, the game's, uh, uh, flags and co uh, flags and coding. Specifically, you can use Infinite Sword Glitch in order to uh, uh, keep Link's momentum uh, uh, for uh, uh, for horizontal movement or uh, or traveling across the surface. So you can uh, so you can uh, accomplish what is known as a super slide via uh, bomb Joe explosions. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these glitch finders. To think that they're they're still probably discovering things about Ocarina of Time, and I say probably because I honestly don't know. That does not say God Box. It's the same fucking symbols that we had on the last one. What is your name, sir? God. Well, Mr. God, uh, we are uh, conducting an investigation in the neighborhood. Just wanted to know if you knew anything about the Left Hand Killer. Hmm. Now, is he the guy that kills using his left hand, or is he the guy that, that uh, severs the left hands God, from all of his victims? The He's the guy who severs the left hand from all of his victims. Aren't they all the same? Uh, no. Oh, unfortunately, I've not seen him, but I did see his brother one day. God, that voice carries. Yep. We got some very exciting troll, I mean, news today. <laughs> My fucking Willy Wonka's chocolate factory here. Oh my god, special prize, special prize, special prize. Gotta head over now. Do it, A2. Mm, well, we should have access to a fast travel once we get back inside the factory. Oh yeah, that's right. A2 has not been paying any attention whatsoever to the to the resource recovery units and the tower. It is amazing how these two paths have remained divergent for so long, and now... Cloud, about to the, come together. the fast travel is behind you. But there's an item over here, my friend. It's just a crystal! Just a crystal. said Crash Bandicoot, mm. and then he had to collect 25 others. I mean, 24 others. Mm. Well, there's, well, these crystals are used for, you know, uh, crafting and upgrades, whereas those crystals were used as a, a power source. They are drastically different MacGuffins. The Park Attraction Square. Of course. Shut up! Negative. This support <laughs> Negative. I will not shut up. You shut up. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, come on. I mean, we just mm. went to we just went to the repair crew. You tell me that wasn't good enough? Well, yeah, because um, because all the all all the repair crew actually did was uh, no was restore our 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 a uh, our physical well being. No, the problem, of course, being that our emotional uh, well-being is significantly more important, as we are, you know, an AI consciousness. And yeah. if we lose our, if we lose our uh, mental well-being, you know, then it doesn't matter. It, it straight up doesn't matter if we have physical bodies or not. We'll not, we will not be able to uh, not complete our objectives. Yeah. You know, I was, I was a lad in high school, making poetic comparisons between seemingly unlike things. But one day I conjectured that a human being is like a pot of water, really. 
both in the literal and in the figurative sense, because humans are mostly made of water. But water has. You see, this that one's an easy one to make comparison. <laughs> Dude, could you, however, could you uh, compare a um, a fantasy cartoon to a basket of potatoes? A basket of potatoes. Well, you see, the that would be the basket of potatoes. It comes to mind that those are the the artists, the sketch drawings, the the layouts, the sequencing, and the other things. With which, the, the materials with which cartoonists put together a cartoon. Because if the potatoes are in the basket, what well, leads, leads me to believe two things. One, is that they still have to work on the potatoes because they're whole. And two, that it's a little awkward and messy to keep worked on potatoes in a, in a basket. Like, can I ask if that it is, is a, true. can I ask if it is a wicker basket or a metal one? Um, honestly, I was thinking it was going to be a wicker basket, but it could very well be a, uh, a metal basket instead if you, if you so choose. Because it depends on how many potatoes we're talking about. Are we making Dexter's Laboratory? Or are we making a Miyazaki-length movie? Mm, um, I was honestly, I was honestly kind of thinking we were doing uh, Adventure Time, but then again, Adventure Time was uh, just starting to air one, not when we were leaving high school, so... Yeah. So a different fantasy cartoon probably would have been totally spies, actually. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not fantasy. It's just science fiction. It, d d dude, science. totally spies is totally a fantasy cartoon. Science. I mean, I mean, it's partially sci-fi and it's and it's mostly espionage, certainly. But they do they do a lot of fantasy tropes in that. Yeah, but fantasy implies specifically like, modern fantasy tropes. There, there's a certain level of plausibility when it comes to when it comes to the difference between science fiction and fantasy. That, like for example, this this world that we're in right now, this is a science fiction universe because it's based on machines. We have machines. We have computers in our existing universe. In this, the year of our Lord, when we're recording this, um, now fantasy implies uh, magic. And, uh, and, uh, super, well, I mean, then, well, going into the creature's problem, like, is the creature fantastical, or is it a science fiction creature? And know, honestly, a majority of creatures, uh, uh from, uh, specifically medieval fantasy would be able to be recreated into modern fantasy settings without, uh, without much a translation issue. Like, for example, like, like, here, here's a, here's something to wrap your brain around. Is a zombie a fantasy creature or a science fiction creature? It's very easily both. I mean, uh, I mean, necromancy. Uh, necromancy no, no, it can't. It can't be both. They're mutually distinct. Not? They're mutually distinct domains. That's why there's two of them. <laughs> okay, so then, it, uh, then we need more. Uh, we need more specified uh, qualities of the zombie. Then, well, see, specifically, I it's method <laughs> of creation. See, I raise this point because zombies, in the classical sense, arose from fantasy. Or, well, well yeah, we'll, we'll just keep it just that, fantasy. That it was it was the work of, of a sorcerer, or a warlock, or a witch, bringing corpses back to life, or even... Yeah, via necromancy. Or, or voodoo. Or actually, where you, you see a more, like, you see a more vivid, like, zombification of living beings while, like, they take a drug and it like obliterates their consciousness and their mental capacity to the point where they're basically like a living corpse. Uh, you see, but that particular uh, a method of creating a zombie is actually sci-fi as opposed to a fantasy. Well, I'm saying in furtherance of my point, while we're just hacking around and destroying things floor by floor, because that's basically all you're doing in the God Box in this part, is in the modern and modern zombies have embraced more like plausibility like for example like the resident evil t virus that comes distinctly to mind which helps that it is a video game where we're commentating on a video game about machines but the t virus implies a biological mechanism that is traceable to observable things which is where fantasy falls to pieces because you can't see the mechanism of magic you just have you just have to believe that it's happening. 
Well, depends on it uh, depends on how poorly fleshed out your setting is. <laughs> I mean, there are several uh, uh, high fantasy settings that actually go into great detail about how the magic system works. Specifically, at, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender and, and its uh, uh, franchise go um, go very deeply into the detail of how of how their magic system works. <laughs> magic system. You got to wait for your meter to recharge. We're still blowing up robots. Yeah, we're still blowing up robots while we are expounding on the differences between genres, if any distinction need even still exist to this point. I mean, I mean, the bottom line is that science fiction and fantasy are two are two genres where you you just they they both have in common that the audience has to take it with a grain of salt. They're saying, okay, I mean, while I am fully aware that these things cannot happen in the real world outside of this uh, narrative setting, that. Uh, it's gonna take a suspension. It's gonna take a suspension of disbelief in order for me to swallow any of this in the first place, so that I can apply it and enjoy it. I don't know, though, dude. I mean, dragons as megafauna would definitely be a thing that I would, I would, I could, you know, make arguments for. Megafauna. The golem. No, golems are actually significantly easier, uh, uh, significantly easier to make arguments for because you know uh, we actually have a lot of uh, folk, uh, a lot of folklore about how specifically to generate, uh, to generate a golem. And the different kinds of golems: the lava golem, the rock golem, the ice golem. I'm oh, not actually dynamite. Big fan of ice golems. I know that Jesus. Shing and the Big Blue are really are really popular in the Monster Rancher community, but like <laughs> most other ice golems are just they're they're just not they're just not nearly as uh, as viable as uh, uh, as viable targets for uh, uh, fa for fantasy video games as you would think that they are. Ice has always got this really weird thing uh, going on where it's supposed to be an extre an extremely deep uh, an extremely defensive uh, attribute for uh, for uh, for the creatures that have it as their aligned element, but all uh, but all the best creatures of the ice element are glass cannons. Right, that they in the name of in in the interest of making it a fun to use character in a game. That it would have to be in a distinct category of usage, like the glass cannon, high attack but low, but low defense and relatively fragile with respect to other creatures and constitutions. Mm. It's the big problem that Pokemon always struggles with. It always wants to make uh, ice types that are that are really physically tanky, and then uh, those those Pokemon specifically don't do anything. <laughs> I do like uh, that in this particular floor of the god box that, because there's a fucking carousel mechanic, that you might be sent into a hazard. And that hazard, of course, is a flying stick of dynamite. Uh, well, this is because you're not actually doing the uh, platforming segment that you're supposed to right here. No, there's no, there is no platform. You can't reach those yeah, platforms. Yeah, there is. You can get on top. No, you can't. You can most certainly no, get on top No, you can't. Here. You, gotta, you gotta take... Well, what were we just talking about? Is wait, do you buy it or do you not buy it? You're just, you know, I'm, I'm the, t I'm the storyteller here, and I'm telling you, that you got, you gotta just take my word for it. You can't get on the platform. <laughs> you have to attack from below, and of course, what better way than the two main methods: using a projectile ballistic laser weapon with your pod, or using your super duper hack abilities. Ding. No, no ding. Okay, where? where Not who, yet. Who there's, is it? There's still Whoa. the heavy. There's still the heavy aerial unit. Oh, well, see, this guy just spawned. He was bleeding. So you can tell that the uh, the being behind these resource recovery units, that cutesy voice, that is uh, trying to put you in a good spot and a good state of mind, is still screwing with us. Because it could have sent it all and at us the at the same part, time. And in we'll finish up the God, the God Box resource tower. Yes. Yes, we will. We're proceeding to the final floor. We're also setting up another storytelling 
trope, the cliffhanger. Yes, the cliffhanger. Is he going to make it? Will he get the resource recovery key in time? Find out next time on... 